Battery operated outdoor power equipment is all the rage these days and there is a premium price to pay to get into it for the convenience that you have. Now what I wanted to do was grab the cheapest or least expensive Greenworks 21 inch self propelled mower on the market and see if you still have the same quality as all the higher voltage stuff that they have out. We're going to go through this 2 by 24 volt battery system top to bottom let you know everything about it. Stay tuned. First, when we talk about the cheapest Greenworks 21 inch self propelled lawnmower, we are excluding last year's models in different sales that are out there. This is going to be the bottom of the barrel is what you're gonna get from Greenworks. So I wanted to see is the quality still here? You're still getting a metal deck, you got some plastic wheels and different things, but how is the feel? How's the cut? What's everything working like? What's the charge time on these two 24 volt batteries? And that stuff is all very interesting once you take a dive deep into this unit. The first thing I wanted to do is start out with charging up the batteries, which Greenworks says will take about 75 minutes. That held true for the batteries out of the box. It took about 75 minutes on the dual charger, but then we got outside and we wanted to do a runtime test. So I started at 9.30 cutting and I just started mowing and you can see by my camera placement that I actually exceeded the furthest part that I thought I would mow. So we ended up mowing about a 70 by 220 to 240 patch, which is awesome because Greenworks says that this will work for a half acre of lawn. And I got that done in 20 minutes. So that's not bad. Cut quality for what we're cutting is absolutely superb. This grass is wet and sticky, so it's coming out the side discharge in clumps sometimes. Uh, but the reality is it's doing quite well, and I'm going to show you why it's going to do quite well on your lawn in a little bit. Now, when this unit died, it died completely. You couldn't see any bars left on the batteries, and there was nothing to get us back as far as self-propulsion to get to the charger or the garage. Once we threw the batteries on the battery charger, the charger immediately said, hey, temperature's too high we're not going to charge right now we're going to wait for them to cool down and since there really is no fan inside this charger we had to just wait for the heat to dissipate so the heat dissipated somewhere around 10 45 so we waited almost an hour for the heat to go away then again wanted to wait 75 minutes. I went out 75 minutes later and I only had one bar on these batteries. So I had to give it about another hour and a half to get full charge on the two 24 volt batteries. So that is a long time. You're talking a little over three hours between you completely draining a set of batteries and then moving on in being able to mow again. And that's not using turbo or anything like that. That was just simply going out and mowing for as long as I could mow. So this actually stacks up very similar to what we would see on a single 40 volt battery as far as their runtime, because a lot of those 40 volts will overheat themselves and then they'll have to cool off and they'll take a long time to charge. That was a little bit disappointing, but when I got back out, I wanted to do a little bit of mulching, which this thing actually did really well. Again, the grass was slightly wet, so I'm still giving it a little bit because uh, there were some stragglers that were around, but that's because the wheels were pushing it down and there wasn't all that lift to pick things up. Again, not running in turbo mode, so I think it's cutting quite well, especially for it being a smaller mower and I say that with the two 24 volt batteries because we've seen some smaller mowers like that not cut real well and this one is definitely doing very good. I switched over to the bagger which one of the big reasons that this one mulches so well is because it does have a mulch plug and I'm going back a little bit we've seen some mowers that didn't have mulch plugs and they don't tend to have the area inside to cut everything up. This one with the mulch plug does well. You pull the mulch plug out, put your bagger on, and I wanted to use the turbo button because they're saying it's for leaves, but the reality is I know that I was gonna need that extra pull for being in wet grass. 
So I just continued to mow up and down trying to get the bag full and I was surprised how packed the bag got not only in its fullness but also just in how tight the grass was pushed together. There's actually quite a bit of suction that is pulling up on this and if you feel the bag while you're mowing around you can see that the bag's blown up and things are happening there which is not always the case with a battery operated mower especially with what I'd consider a smaller model. So the bag filled up to almost complete enough that uh, it was really tough for any grass to really get through the hole in the back of the mower and into the bag. So as far as the performance wise is how it'll do there, it's excellent. On turbo, your runtime is gonna be cut down by about a third. So unfortunately, if you're going to bag with this, your runtime is gonna come down to about 15 minutes. In the RPMs on turbo is 3750, which seems low when you really think about it, but you have to remember that blade tip speed is going to be calculated way out at the tip of this blade. So it performed well. It's going to work well for someone with a small yard. It was quiet. Let's go into the quality and what you get. First things first, we have a single lever that will take this from one inch all the way up to four. I was cutting at three and a half. We have a metal deck that's around here. It is very nicely powder coated. It feels like it's built well. It doesn't seem like it's cheap and chintzy. This, this guy was 80 pounds when it was delivered. So it's actually fairly heavy. Up in front, you have a safety key that's here and you also have a simple two battery slot here that will hold larger batteries. This came with two five amp hours. There's room if they do go larger. This side discharge lifts up. There's another piece that goes inside. Everything is pretty standard as far as how it works. You have three positions that you can put this in. There's simple click in style, which is somewhat again standard on what I see with Greenworks. We have it in the middle setting at that point. If we come back here, something that I like is having full control if I'm moving something around. So if I, even if I have one hand on this, I can move side to side. I'm not getting a lot of twisting or anything in the lawnmower, so control is excellent. And turning it on is easy. To turn the mower on, we'll push the power button and pull back on the handle. You can hear it turn on. We can push turbo. RPM comes up. Then we can adjust our drive speed down here. So our self-propulsion, if we have the power on, we don't have to have the blades running, but then we can adjust our drive speed. And one thing that I found is if you stop, if you want to pull backwards right away, you have to push forward slightly and then pull back to kind of release the wheels. There is no pressure on this unit at all. So if you want to use it without the self-propulsion, you'd have no issue doing so. One of the big benefits to a battery operated mower, besides not having to change oil, is being able to store these, especially in the winter time or when they're not in use, standing straight up. So this one is very simple. Put it in its position and you can store this standing up like this without any issue. Let's come in and take a look at the underside of this deck because I think that's important. Looking at the bottom of these battery operated mowers, it's always very interesting because you can see a lot of different configurations. You can see who's been in the game a while and who hasn't. Greenworks knows what they're doing. They put a nice deep deck in here. But the reality is the big thing that, that Greenworks is doing that makes this cut well is going to be this blade. Now it's a normal, very thin blade that is standard on most battery operated mowers, but it cuts at two different levels. So your first cut is out here and it's low and then it bends itself up still with the cutting edge there and cuts up high. This is not only gonna help with the lift that it's gonna get at the end, but it's also gonna give you a better mulch and probably better bagging because it's going to cut the grass up into smaller pieces and be able to move it with less effort. Now you do have some fins here that are gonna pull some air in around the motor that's down here, but this system really works well in, you can tell. 
One of the things that I always kind of joke around with on this, this is a 21 inch mower, so I like to pull my tape out and just see how long the blade is. The blade on this guy is gonna come in exactly, well, it's 19 and 7 eighths inches. So where do we get the 21 inches from? And normally that's from the outside of the deck, but here we're gonna get 21 in 9 sixteenths. So inside of the deck, it's going to give us 20 and three quarters. So there's nothing really that is 21 inches here. You're realistically getting just under a 20 inch cut. Now I also like to look and line up these wheels because this gives you a little bit of your overlap when you're making your rows. So this isn't bad. We're getting approximately an inch and a half of blade that's going over and outside the wheels. This helps and shows you a little bit of how this mower would work for trimming. Because technically, we can get within approximately an inch and a quarter of something from the blade to the outside of the deck. Now in the front, we can get within four and a half inches of something approximately. And I guess once you take the blade in there, it's a full five. So trimming to the front, you're, getting, you're losing a lot of space off to the side, about an inch and a half. As far as the wheels, it's nice that they actually have ball bearings in them. So that is a huge upgrade to what we've seen with some lesser expensive models. And then of course the back is gonna be your motors that are gonna run for your self propulsion. Overall, I have to say the quality on this 48 volt mower is right up there with a lot of their 60 and 80 volt mowers, which really surprised me. But if you look at prices across the board, going between the 48, the 60, and the 80 volt in the Greenworks line, there's not a huge difference between any of them. So what's the downside of this mower? And realistically, it only comes down to one, in my opinion, and that is simply the charge time. And one of the reasons I'm always hesitant to jump into something that has lesser volts in a larger battery powered unit like a lawnmower is because we seem to pull a lot of energy from the battery and by doing so we create a lot of heat in the battery as it's discharging. That heat is hard on the batteries and it also makes it so that you can't charge them up right away. So you have to wait for them to thermally cool down and then they charge again. That cycle took upwards of three hours. That for someone who has a larger lawn is going to be a big deal. If this is something that you could cut your whole lawn with and you didn't have to worry about running out of charge and you didn't have to delay finishing your lawn for three hours, not a big deal. This unit's quiet. It's got good runtime at about 20 minutes. It's got a turbo mode so that if you needed to mulch up leaves, it works well. The blade on the bottom really works well for mulching. So there's a lot of pluses to this unit. And if we could see Greenworks 24 volt stuff come out in a 3p battery which would be seven and a half amp hour eight amp hour even go upwards of 10 there's a lot of space inside there if we could get something like that this lawnmower would probably not heat up the batteries as much give you a lot more runtime and the power is already there so i'm not really begging for that so there's some things that could happen for this mower to really change it up so that you could get that better runtime. It's just going to be what will the future of that 24 volt line bring. So that's going to be interesting to watch in the future as this moves forward also. So overall, not bad. I kind of like it. I like to see the build quality, although when I look at the expense and I start to compare around to different mowers on the market, it makes it really hard because everybody wants to pull 449, 499, 599. And when I get up to spending that amount of money on a lawnmower, I want something that's going to last me for 20 years. And when you're buying battery operated outdoor power equipment, you're not buying really a piece of equipment, you're buying technology. And that technology in 20 years is going to be non existent. So I don't see this as something that's viable to say is going to be around for 20 years. And I'm not talking specifically Greenworks. I'm talking any battery operated mower at this point in time. 
The life cycle there is going to be what technology brings and how fast it's bringing it. And with electronic vehicles pushing batteries and everybody trying to get more and more battery technology out there, the life cycle for some of these mowers is going to be incredibly short. We'll see if something changes there, but uh, that's my personal opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion on this stuff. Leave them in the comments. If you watched this far, I have to ask you for a like in that video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for your time. Have a great day.